<laughs> what is up my exchange family from all over the world and thank you for tuning in to another episode of chief chat my name is chief master Sergeant kevin osby and i'm your senior enlisted advisor for the army and air force exchange service before we get started with our guest today i would like to, i would like to introduce my lovely co-hosts leah matthews and julie mitchell how y'all doing ladies hi good chief. to see you hi awesome awesome man so we are fresh off our high of our first ever live <laughs> in person chief chat yeah, that we right. had last friday with uh, air supply so that was that was a, that was a great interview and we we get a chance to talk to another musical guest today which is awesome so uh we got a w well established rock and roll band so julie please introduce today's guest Yes, sir. I love it when we have musical guests. And today's guests are the front women of the innovative rock band Butcher Babies, which recently celebrated 10 years together. They've toured alongside some big names, Megadeth, Rob Zombie, Five Finger Death Punch, and they're ready to reach new heights here in 2021. They're with us today to discuss their career and their latest single, Last Dance. Please give a warm chief chat welcome to the front women for Butcher Babies, Carla Harvey and Heidi Shepard. Hey. Hi. Hi, thank hey. you guys. So happy to be here. So great to uh, follow up Air Supply. Uh, don't tell anyone, but that's one of my favorite bands. <laughs> wow. I knew it. <laughs> I, feel, I feel a little bit cheated, though, that we can't be, you know, like there in person with you guys, too. Oh, man. So, Listen, we, 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 need to, we'll do we need anything. to make that happen, definitely, once this, once all this craziness is over with. Yeah. Let us know if you're going to be in Dallas. We'll For definitely sure. come see Dallas. you in person. We'll have to. Well, thank you. <laughs> for sure thank you guys so much for taking time out to join us and everybody watching you know what to do let us know where you're tuning in from share your questions and comments for carla and heidi in our comment section we'll read those live now is a great time to start your watch party to enjoy this live interview with our friends and if you're not following our page well you should we have chief chats lined up military exclusive guests all summer for you Man, so Carla and Heidi, thank you so much for joining us on Chief Chat, man. We really appreciate you taking some time to talk with us. Yeah, no problem at all. We were excited. We've been waiting for this. Awesome, this awesome. It's all ours. <laughs> so can you can you tell our viewers where you're calling in from? I'm calling in from Illinois, my new home. Well, Heidi and I, we were talking before this all started. We both moved this year from our longtime home of Los Angeles to, I moved back to the Midwest and Heidi is in Vegas now. So, <sighs> Carlos spilled the beans. I'm in Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> Sin City, <you>, baby. <laughs> Absolutely. And there's a Baby Yoda sighting. Uh, that that I've, <laughs> We got Baby Yoda in the building. I have a couple. These are my babies. Oh. They all, my only babies. <laughs> I have one downstairs. Um, yeah. And my dog gets really scared. So I make it talk to my dog. And she's like. <gasps> <laughs> it's, it's May the 4th. So May the 4th be with you all that are watching. Mm -hmm. Heidi always trolls me on this day and posts pictures Spock like a like a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> I always wait till about three minutes after she posts her uh, "May the Fourth Be With You," then I come in with my. <laughs> I listen, your your fingers, with, listen, yeah, your my, fingers are good. Like mine won't do that. I had a lot of practice. <laughs> <laughs> So you mentioned um, you guys are in Chicago and then Vegas. And how have you been doing during the pandemic? It's been a year. <laughs> you know, it was really hard at first. I had been planning to move to Illinois, but then the, you know, the pandemic, um, it was crazy. You know, Heidi and I actually went to a show together the night before everything got crazy and everything shut down. And we, and we had a tour booked and everything. And we were like, there's no way this is this, no way this is going to happen. This is not going to be a big deal. And then, every, you know, the whole world came crashing down and I had to move across the country. So I felt like I was leaving, you know, my best friend, the all tours were off and it was just a really dark time at first. But, um, I feel like one of the most important things in life is to learn how to be adaptable to situations. And so personally, I just adapted and I said, you know, there's some things that you've been wanting to do and that you don't ever have time for. So concentrate and focus on those. And, um, you know, you have to get out of bed in the morning and you have to be happy. So that's basically what I did. And I actually came into a pretty good place and I've been happy. I mean, it's going to be great to finally go back on tour and, yeah. but it, but, you know, after the initial depression of, you know, 
things, life being so completely different, I just threw myself into doing art and um, survived. <laughs> and that's the thing about being a touring musician is that we wake up in a new city every day. We have to sometimes wake up in a city where they speak a different language than the day before, use a different currency. So there are different um, you know, ways that we've coped throughout the art. 10 years of touring um, that really helped us in the pandemic life or landscape, I guess you can say. Um, one thing that I was actually really grateful for as well was to be able to focus on other things that I had very I'd put to the wayside over the past 10 years, which was a lot of uh, my health. Um, I'm very lucky that there are uh, the personal gyms here in Vegas have been open since I've lived here. And so I've really been able to focus on my fitness, focus on my health, nutrition, everything. It's been great. Another awesome thing is that we had um, a lot of friends that have moved to this area in the rock industry over the past several years. And in the normal life, everyone would be on tour at different times. However, everyone's forced to be home right now. So I've been able to connect with a whole bunch of people in the music industry. And it's been really cool and unique because we're all going through this exact same thing, the exact same feeling thrust out of our, you know, 10 months out of the year on tour, taken completely out of that and into this lifestyle that we hadn't yeah, we have an experience. I mean, in my adulthood, I've basically been on tour the whole time. So it was really kind of buckling down and becoming a gourmet chef, as I'm sure the rest of everyone else did as well. <laughs> 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 Learning games, um, spending so much time with my puppy. Um, this has obviously been the best thing for dogs, <laughs> any animals. <Yes. laughs> um, but uh, overall, I have been fine. It took a little bit, but um, especially right now, I'm great. I feel like uh, we have adapted. We do have some tours coming up that we're planning at the moment. Um, spilling the beans, but we I already kind of spilled it. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but I mean, everyone's kind of getting back on the horse. And I'm so excited to jump back in and get back to work and tour the world and have that energy exchange with the fan base. Um, but I will miss the the routine and the uh, the life that I've created here, but you know, so is life. <laughs> yeah. you know, with all the craziness that the pandemic brought, it did, it did give you a chance to reset. And so I think that's the overall art, arch and message. I got a chance to, you know, cause we, we live life in the fast lane and we're always go, 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 go. And this kind of forced us to kind of slow, slow our butts down and, and really just appreciate yeah. life, <laughs> life it's in general. To slow down. And one thing Heidi mentioned cooking, I really enjoyed cooking for, you know, I have a boyfriend and basically a stepdaughter and it was so nice to have dinner together every night and to learn how to cook different things for them and to see the smiles on their faces when they liked, you know, what I made and just to spend all that time, especially when we were really locked down and couldn't do anything, you know, Heidi mentioned playing games too, like board games. We learned to play dominoes together, like oh, yeah. mm -hmm. just, just simple family stuff that a lot of musicians don't get to experience all the time with their significant others and children um, because you're gone so much. So you really get a chance to bond during a time like this. Fantastic. So glad that you guys have adjusted well and are doing well. Um, thanks for sharing that. So can you tell us about Butcher Babies? How did you um, and the rest of the band, how did you all meet? And then how did you get started? Well, Carla answered um, uh, an ad on MySpace. <laughs> <laughs> That's how long. Love it. Love, it. love it. Love it. It was. Uh, it was like I think 2008, 2000, end of 2007. Uh, I was in a different band. It was an all-girl punk metal cover band. Imagine that. Um, just. It was crazy. <laughs> um, and we were looking for another fun girl and Carla came along and we instantly became best friends. And we wanted to create something original together. And so we left that cover band and created Butcher Babies in the vein of Wendy O'Williams, who was the first female in metal and punk and metal, you know, and uh, she, she really paved the way for 
I think all females to get out there and just really kick some butt. And for us, that was really important, especially coming from the worlds that we came from, you know, from the acting world and, you know, people always thrust us into doing modeling and stuff like that, which in our hearts, music was what we wanted to do. And it really was, you know, Wendy O who paved the way for us. And so when it came to a band name, it was like, Butcher Babies. <laughs> the song, it was one of our favorite songs that we used to cover from Wendy O. And um, man, we just kind of got together with a couple of friends, friends of friends or friends. Um, and the second the five of us stepped into a room together and we just plugged in the instruments and started playing, it really was magic. And we knew that there was something different here, something cool and unique. And the thing that's been, I think, the the coolest thing about Butcher Babies through this entire thing is like is that Carla and I are genuinely best friends. We have been before this even started, and we've been able to maintain that <laughs> over the past, you know, these many years, 13 years since we've met. Um, it's been, you know, a really fun ride with our best friends. And, you know, Butcher Babies for us isn't just like we go out and play music. We get to do this with people we love. So that's really fun. Which really makes all the difference in the world because, I mean, you see bands that don't want to even be on the same bus together. That's like a real thing with so many people that we know. I can't wait to get on a bus with Carla. (laughs) (laughs) Heidi and I have always slept across the way from each other. And on one bus that we had, which was actually the tour bus from the Motley Crue Home Sweet Home video, that's how old and janky it was. (laughs) Oh, wow. Bus a few times, but I, there, uh, we had our own back room with two little beds in it. And so we spent the whole tour, you know, li- you know, it was like a sleepover overnight, but we, we were across the hall, bunk alley from each other all the time. We're always cracking jokes all night. And um, no matter if we have an, an argument or a disagreement or the best day ever, the moment we hit the stage together and you see your best friends that you've built your career with, you know, from across, you can't help but be happy and have a big smile on your face and it's just it's there's nothing like it It, so it's funny you say that because we we uh like i said we interviewed air supply uh, last friday and uh they've never had an argument or a falling out in 45 years oh wow so and so we asked them what the secret was and he he said because we never got married so carla (laughs) don't ever marry heidi (laughs) you won't won't have any issues right you (laughs) (laughs) shoot (laughs) (laughs) yeah well I mean the thing is is you know running a business together being in that close of quarters all the time it's it's going to happen but it is very rare it's very very rare um I think I can count on one hand the arguments that we've had over the past decade plus you know it's we're very lucky we all get along we kind of all have the same brain Um, when it comes to making decisions as a band it's always been very easy because Carla really knows what's going to come out of my mouth and vice versa and then Henry our guitar player he's been my boyfriend for 10 years so I know what's going to come out of his mouth too (laughs) so so it's uh it's I feel really like whenever we do fight too, something silly happens to break up the fight. Like I remember one time we were fighting about something and I literally fell out of the bus because of my backpack <laughs> on the way out. We had, and, and I was trying to get out of the bus door and I was stuck with that turtle backpack. Yeah. And then I fell out of the bus. And then another time we were fighting and the, the driver stopped the bus. The, we were in an RV at the time and we were out there arguing and just it wasn't yeah. even me it wasn't me it was a different person in the band it was my person. <laughs> and then this fucking cooler that we all hated that the bus driver had bus driver security guard he had this stupid cooler that took up all this space and that had like a jar of pickles in it and we hated it and so <laughs> we're arguing it goes sailing past my head so like p- there's always someone that breaks the mood of the fight and then we all laugh and it's over and it's fine <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. High five and go along. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, well, I'm glad y'all are still still rocking out with each other uh, th- this many years later. So we 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 got the uh, in a huge military community joining us live today from all over the world, and uh, understand you really care deeply about our nation's heroes. Oh. So can you tell us about your military co- connection? Do you have any fa- families or friends that have served? 
Um, I don't have, so my, my grandpa was in the Korean War. That's about all, no one served too much of my family, but I have a huge, we both have a huge passion for vets. I'm a grief counselor and I actually did some work with um, vets that had brain injuries in Michigan. There's a, a big ranch there that um, vets go to. And it was such a life-changing experience for me. And I really hope that I get to do it again. And um, it's it's just something that's really, really important. For us. I was working with the Independence Fund. I'm not sure if you've heard of the Independence Fund, but um, to do free counseling for, for um, you know, for vets that had, like I said, been injured and had brain injuries and had to deal with coming home to, I mean, it's crazy what people go through and people don't realize that sometimes people come home with headaches every day and they, um, their lives are completely changed because of something that happened uh, or a bomb went off over here. And now they have a headache the rest of their life every single day and they don't know how to deal with it. And um, just to be able to talk to people one-on-one -on -one and see a little light bulb go off when I, when we had a conversation that maybe taught them how to think a different way about what they've been going through. It was so life-changing for me. And I can't thank you guys enough for what you do for, for all of us. It's just incredible, incredible. So thank yeah. you. It really is. And for us, it's uh, every single time. I, I, I don't know if we've played a show where there hasn't been um, a vet or even active military that has come and said hello. And to us, it, means the world that we're able to offer them that sense of departure for a moment of uh you know release and for us it's release as well um actually every grandpa that i have <laughs> served uh my mom's biological father my mom's adopted father and my dad's father so they all served and it's had a big part of my family and it's been even um, at my my grandfather's funeral. It was a big part of the funeral, and for us, um, it's been inspiring for the whole family to see what kind of influence that they have had, you know, throughout all the vets and all the um, because it's like a family, and uh, to see that as our family has been very ex inspiring. Um, my uh, my mother's father, he passed away before I was born, so I was never able to meet him. But his legacy definitely lives on and has lived on in our family. Um, he has inspired my uncle, who is currently in the military, um, and then we do have a cousin who um, is still missing in action, but it's, uh, it's been a big, big part of our family. And of course, every single time that, uh, it, you know, is brought up to us on a show or on a tour, it's so important to us. And it's been something, the military and supporting the military has been something that we've wanted to get involved in for a very, very, very long time. Since we started, we've talked about it. And so it's amazing for us to be here. Uh, and even just, you chit chat with you guys. Um, a while ago, we got to play Call of Duty with a couple of <laughs> a couple of active military, and it's just really, it's really important for us to feel like we can support any way we can at all possible. And I think that you know, for uh, us, music has been such a relief, and I do hope that we can offer that to our vets and our active military as well. So, thank you very much. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Chief. No, no. I, I was going to thank Heidi uh, and, and your family for their service. So thank thank them for their service as well. And Carla, you mentioned uh, the Independence Fund. I had never heard of that. So that's probably something we can post on our on our page yeah, because uh, I'm always I'm all about giving giving out resources for people uh, that, that may be going through some stuff and it, to have some free counseling, especially with traumatic brain injuries, that's the huge thing. So uh, I thank you for sharing that resource with us. And then Chief, you and I were on the same wavelength because I was just gonna thank them for sharing their family's passion and their and their military stories with us. Um, and along those lines, as Chief mentioned, we do have a military community watching from all over the world. What words of hope or encouragement can you share today with soldiers, airmen, guardians, sailors, Marine, and the Coast Guard members who are watching with us? Gosh, I mean, you guys inspire us. I think just personally, I know. I know it must be really, you know, 
so I have Heidi knows this. Everyone knows I struggle with being on the road a lot and away from my family and my dog and and uh, normalcy. And so thank you guys so much because you do that for a crazy amount of time, longer than I can imagine, and you do it to protect us. And uh, so that's just an amazing thing that you do. And so perseverance and knowing that you are um, doing it for the greater good at all times and knowing that just small little people like us are just looking up to you so much. Um, I hope that keeps you going. Like it keeps us going on the road. Sometimes there'll be just one person that says, thank you. And it helps me go to the next city and the next city after that. So I hope that us just saying our little small thank you can help you make it through another, you know, short amount of time away from your family. And uh, I just really just appreciate you so much. Well, that hard work and, and dedication to your country also is very inspiring. And it's not just inspiring to us, but it'll be inspiring to your your children, your children's children, your your nieces, your nephews, uh, the kid next door. It's inspiring to everybody that you come in contact with. And so I guess, you know, like Carla said, little on me, all I could say is, you know, keep living that legacy. And that legacy is going to outlive everybody. That legacy is going to carry on for centuries. And so thank you so much for that. Thanks for sharing that. Um, we know it means a lot to our viewers. So, um, Carla and Heidi talking about inspiration. Um, I know that you've mentioned Wendy O. So who, um, who would you say inspires you musically? And then how have you channeled that inspiration into your work with butcher, butcher babies? Well, I think we both have kind of vast difference in, in inspiration. Some are the same, but we grew up, um, we're a little bit different in age. So I think that, my first inspiration was Guns N' Roses that showed me like, oh my God, this, there's like rock and roll has a whole lifestyle attached to it. It's not just, you know, the music itself. When you see the imagery of these cool bands and like the leather and then the streets of Hollywood, that really inspired me to want to, um, you know, get out of my small town and, and go to LA and be a rock star. And then I found metal, you know, I found thrash metal, uh, you know, sitting in the, back of a van with some friends and listening to Shortest Straw by Metallica. And then I found Pantera and I was like, wow, that guy's voice. I want to do that with my voice one day. Um, so for me, it was just, you know, being an angry kid in the Midwest, listening to, <laughs> listening to metal and then, you know, gathering up the, the strength to move and go follow those dreams after that. I just saw a post, a Facebook memory. I love Facebook memories lately. Oh, yeah. um, and it was just um, uh, a picture of uh, Phil Ensemble singing on stage with Anthrax. They were doing a cover of In This Love for um, for the Golden God Awards. And I had written, I got to watch my idol tonight. Um, and then a couple of years later, we would be touring with Phil. And it was just, uh, it's just, you know, it's you have to like look back and be excited about all those little moments that made you who you are, you know, coming up and everything. And we've gotten to you know, sing with our idols and hang with our idols and be idols to somebody else. And it's been so, so cool. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. when you like think about it, when I'm sitting here in the burbs now and I think about it, it's like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> to pinch yourself, this is real life. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think for me, you know, kind of thinking back about, um, and I haven't really discussed this much with people, but since this is, uh, kind of thinking about my grandpa on my dad's side, I grew up going to family reunions where my my dad's my dad and his brothers all had a band. Now dad, my dad's the middle of twelve kids, so there's a lot of them to go around. Everyone can play an instrument. So whether it's <clears throat> whether it's a, a a wedding, a funeral, a birthday, there's always a drum set, there's guitars. In my parents' living room right now, they have the same setup. So I grew up around a lot of music. Now my grandpa, when I was younger, he would always sit around all the kids around. And I was one of the oldest of the cousins. Now there's so many, I can't even count, but <laughs> it, it's crazy. Uh, he definitely carried a legacy. There's a lot of shepherds. And so we, uh, 
we would sit around and he would tell us stories and then he would sing to us songs. And I believe that a lot of these songs were songs that he would be able to just play a simple guitar and sing along, you know, keep yourself busy in different uh, times in, in life. And he taught us uh, several songs at, at that age. And it became kind of a, a thing with my family. Okay, who's going to sing this song with grandpa? <laughs> and it was an honor to sing with grandpa at the time. And who's going to sing this song? And who's going to sing this song? And so when I push it all the way back to that, I believe that that's where my first inspiration to uh, really love music came from. Uh, watching my dad and his brothers get together and play music and they take turns singing and it's one big partridge family basically <laughs> and um and i think that that was the biggest thing for me now fast forward um air supply one of my first favorite bands because it was one of my mom's favorite bands i i could sing almost every song i saw them in concert in vegas uh about six years ago and it was amazing um but <laughs> My parents didn't really let me listen to hard rock or metal. So I would sneak away and listen to like corn and slipknot and all this stuff that spoke to me as an angry teenager. Uh, I grew up very, very religious. And so a lot of these songs were kind of like, fuck your beliefs, fuck this, fuck that. Blah, 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 blah. And as a young kid, I was like, yeah that's what I think, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, you know, and, and it really, it really spoke to me at that young age and it gave me a, a voice, some, you know, young teenage girl from Provo, Utah gave me a voice and, and I really gravitated towards that angry music, but granted, this lady right here, Gwen Stefani, is probably my favorite performer of all time. I just think that she's absolutely amazing, and I cried when I saw her in concert. <laughs> so it took me a second to realize that. I thought it was a picture of you at first, oh. and then I, like, I think it looks, she, you guys, it's your doppelganger. <laughs> <laughs> Man, those are two awesome stories, and what I got out of it is there's a, there was an angry uh, little girl in Utah, and it was an angry little girl in the Midwest, Detroit. That, that uh yep. that, that found their dreams and so mm -hmm. yeah, that's an awesome story and the crazy thing is like how the hell do you meet each other that's why i think <laughs> like a little bit of fate that comes into play because there's no reason that we should be friends at all you know like there's no reason that we should have found each other in a sea of people in la to form this you know this band that actually made it out of all the bands in the world that are trying to make it and uh it's just, it's crazy. Hey, we're still trying. We're, we're still, still trying. <laughs> so, so let's let's talk about your new single, Last Dance. So it, it dropped in early April. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the song and why it's so special, especially amid the COVID pandemic? Well, I love this song. I think that to, to me personally, when we were writing this song, I remember <clears throat> Carla and I really love to do this free writing um, exercise when we're writing together, where we'll pick a topic or they'll, we'll be feeling something with the music. And usually it, we feel kind of the exact same way. It's always been this way. We'll write about something and we'll be end up writing about the same topic. It happens all the time. But we, I had this memory of... Uh, of some people that were really important in my life back in the day. And I say back in the day as in college, like 15 years ago, not, you know, that's my back in the day. <laughs> but uh, but it, I had these, this memory of laying on top of, we would drive to the canyons, we'd lay on top of the hoods of our cars and we would all talk about our hopes and our dreams for the future. And I would talk about, you know, wanting to be a rock star and, you know, if it's ever possible, this is my dream. Like these are, this would be my shining star. And, uh, and, and so when writing this song, it kind of w took a turn to be about um, beautiful memories, about people that have shaped your life for the better. Uh, not just about those three people that I had in my head, but so many people, any of us, when you listen to this song, it's, you know, hold a candle for me, let it burn slowly. Like, don't forget me. I'll never forget you. You had this big impact on my life. And we've never really written anything kind of like that before. And listening to the song, I hope that other people can take away good memories 
with people that they love and have loved in the past. Um, and, you know, that's that's kind of our our MO with Last Dance. We don't really want it to be a last dance. It's one more dance, but it is. <laughs> Just have one last dance with me. <laughs> Yeah, it was funny when we do our free writes, we write so similarly, different experiences, but you know, there's, they always say there's like seven main stories people go through in life. That's like the rule. And it's funny how your stories interconnect. And that's why songs are so important to your fan base, because no matter what they're going through, they can connect in some way to the lyrics. And I remember when we were writing the song, we both had the imagery of sitting in the car, um, you know, dreaming with your friends and for me too it became a bit of a, a love song because I was in the middle of rekindling a relationship with someone and the lyrics are very much like remind me in, of that like what was happening in my life at that time too and it's a really beautiful song people have connected to it you know we were a little afraid to release songs that are so different from our heavy heavy stuff but mm -hmm. our fan base is so awesome and they really allow us to kind of do what we want and they appreciate you know um everything from our the softest ballad to the heaviest song the same guy will be in in the pit for the heaviest song <laughs> and then he'll be crying in the front row I, I'm not <laughs> it's <laughs> awesome you guys it's <laughs> true it happens <laughs> For, That's so great. <laughs> for the softer song and that to me it's just like people shouldn't be afraid to go outside their genre or even listen to something outside the genre that you would normally listen to because there's nothing wrong with being touched by a song no matter you know no matter what the genre is that's what music is supposed to do it's supposed to make you feel something yeah we were I mean, and we all go through all that in life so it's like we, we can get to the point where we want to smash a guitar against a tree or, or we can get to the point where we want to hug somebody and, and not let them go. So, like I said, we, we all experience that as humans. So the fact that you can, you know, take your songs to that same journey, I think it that, that's a good reason to connect. Well, and I think also during the pandemic, this song really hit home for a lot of people, too. We were kind of surprised at how it took off uh, because it was probably the most uh, a departure from our typical sound, but we needed it as people. As Carla said, you know, she was going through a thing at a time. I had, you know, all flood of memories coming back and it was something that we needed. Music is our therapy too. And like you said, uh, you know, the heaviest of the heavy sometimes, but I, I, I truly feel like sometimes I need something that brings back awesome memories, not just smashing faces. <laughs> and in the <laughs> pandemic world, you know, it's been really important for us to have the memory of our best friends. Uh, Carla and I have only seen each other twice since the pandemic started. Oh, well, three times now, <laughs> three, times. <laughs> three times now, but it was, we went for not, see, we, we didn't see each other for like eight months at one point. And it was wild because we used to see each other almost every day. We'd go to yoga together every day. And this is not any different than most people. Some people I've seen hadn't hugged their moms in 15 months, you know, things like that. And so a song like this, really, I, I feel like the reason it took off is because it invoked those feelings for people of, you know, missing their loved ones and their best friends. I hope. No. As the world as so as the world begins to reopen, you know, concerts are coming back and hopefully you'll be able to play Last Dance live in front of audiences soon. Who would you most like to headline a tour with post pandemic? That's such hard a hard day. <laughs> so many fans and we can't we shouldn't say who who it might be, Heidi. No, we're not gonna <laughs> because we because um <laughs> because there is one planned. And so, <laughs> so, uh, and that's no secret. There are, there are festivals this fall that we will be hitting up at, and when there's festivals, there's typically a tour. So if we're allowed to go, we're going to go. So we have it planned. Um, but I think for us coming back into the real world, maybe if another band were to headline, maybe we would go with, uh, Rammstein. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> would be pretty cool. A world tour with Rammstein? I would not be mad about that. <laughs> I agree with that. I like that. Oh, yeah. Or maybe a, <laughs> tuned. Maybe a world tour with Anthrax, Carla. Yeah, I mean, I would love that. Do you know anyone? 
I can ask the drummer if he might. <laughs> I the drummer in Anthrax and I've been begging him. Heidi knows I'm like, whenever I, I like listen in on his calls to see when the next tour is, I'm like this. And I'm like, what was that Europe? What, what? Come on, just get. <laughs> I literally beg him, beg his manager. You know, it's all like very like, uh, you know, they have, there's different things that go into who you're going to bring on tour with you or whatever. I can't just say, bring us because I'm your girlfriend, but um, I keep waiting for the time is right. Cause that would be so much fun for me. Heidi, it's, Heidi gets a tour with her boyfriend all the time. <laughs> mm-hmm. and, uh, I would love, love, love to, to tour with my boyfriend. And it's also a great fit because Anthrax puts on this incredible show um, still. Um, I think they're celebrating their 40th anniversary of when they became a band uh, this year and like still they all go wild on stage so it's a really good fit because it's just like our band we all every single member of our band puts on a show same with theirs i think it would be awesome look we're putting that in the atmosphere yeah <laughs> Come on, Charlie. stay tuned you guys um <laughs> So you guys recently live streamed Goliath Live Worldwide, performing um, your debut album for the first time in nearly a decade. So what was this like for you? And then what did it mean for the fans? Oh, it was at first I was like, oh, my God, I don't remember any of these songs. (laughs) (laughs) Those songs, that was the first album we ever wrote. And some of the vocal, like, stuff that we wrote, it's like, that goes where now? Like, why, why, why did we do that? So we, do we need to change it again right now? It's awesome. I love this album and it's so, I don't know, it's so pure and raw and cool. And, but it was like, it took a minute to remember all the lyrics. Cause a lot of, some of the songs we hadn't played live in, you know, a decade, if ever, there were some songs that we hadn't played ever, I think, but yeah. it was, uh, you know, we, we got, we got in after a few rehearsals, we were okay, but it was a little daunting at first. It was really fun for us to be able to revisit these songs that really launched our career too. And I think that's what was uh, really cool for our fan base to be a part of is to hear these songs that they hadn't heard in years. I mean, they can listen to it on Spotify or Apple, wherever, if they have the CD or not vinyl yet, but maybe soon. Um, (laughs) But (laughs) if they have all that, you know, but hearing these songs live they just hadn't heard and it's crazy because it was almost a decade ago that we wrote and recorded these songs so we sound very different too um man my voice is very different than it was 10 years ago that's just how it's gonna be if you put you know 10 months out of the year doing something almost every night you're you're going to be different whether it's better or not (laughs) I think it's better but uh but it was fun to showcase our 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 vocals now with those songs it was really fun to dive in and kind of make them butcher babies now and it I I hope that we can do this in the future we um I don't know. Maybe, maybe it'll, maybe there'll be a tour with it. I don't know. I would love to do a Goliath set. That would be, I'd, I'd pay the admission fee for that. (laughs) (laughs) Well, ladies, I want to turn very briefly to our live Facebook feed and read some of the comments to you that have been coming in. Um, So we have a lot of people with heart emojis. So Everybody loves you. Um, We Gina Berry says, hello. Um, We have somebody named Slick Nick says, howdy from Texas. I highly doubt that's his real name, but Slick Nick (laughs) says, says, hello. Marie says, um, best of the West in Texas. So she's wishing you well wishes from Texas. Um, She says that she's also sending love and light to you. Um, She respects what you guys do. Slick Nick also loves your hair, Carla. Loving the hair color. Um, And then... Um, I also, somebody's watching from San Angelo, Texas. That's Jackie watching from San Angelo. And there was a comment from Lenka. And I'm not going to try to pronounce the last name because there is um, an accent mark involved and I won't get it right. But <laughs> Lenka says, hello, lovely people. Your music is a big inspiration for me and it helped me through some bad times. Thank you. So you guys are out there making a difference. Um, And Leonilla Steven says, hello, everyone, and happy Tuesday from Ellsworth, South Dakota. So you guys are touching lives all over the world today. Thank you. 
Oh, no, thank you so much. It's so cool. We, you know, it's the best we can do until we can actually get to Texas, <laughs> get to South Dakota, <laughs> you know, and I, we can't wait till that happens, man. We miss our, we miss our fan base. We miss everybody, you know, as much as, um, Oh, I love, I love the fact that, you know, they can write and say, this touched my life, this touched my life. It, it touches ours too. And every time we get to play a show, the energy back and forth really touches our lives. That's what keeps us on the road after, you know, a decade. <laughs> it keeps us on the road because that interaction, it means the world to us. So thanks for even saying hi on Facebook, guys. Thank you, guys. Awesome. So uh, what's ahead for Butcher Baby? So I know you guys have been giving us some subliminal uh, messages throughout the interview uh, and, and have shared some exclusive stuff that uh, nobody's heard of yet. So if you want to hear it, watch the interview. So what else can you share with us that you're working on? Well, more new music coming out. Um, I'm so excited about some of the new stuff we have coming out. It's pretty crazy. I don't even want to give any hints because I, I just don't want to give, give it away. Yeah, don't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah even, like, we can't say too much because we give it we give it away with our facial expressions, everything. <laughs> so, so yeah, there might be some music. There might be a tour eventually. I don't know, you know. Yeah. But we 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 recorded uh, the majority of our music in 2019. So we're very excited for some of this stuff to finally come out because it's been a long time waiting. <laughs> but. We do have several festivals that we are playing in the fall. We are playing Aftershock in Sacramento. We are playing Metal in the Mountains in um, West Virginia. And we do have others that have not been announced yet that we are very excited to take part in, which means, like I said, a tour. I, I spilled the beans yesterday on my Instagram, so it doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> Because the thing is, is uh, I, I, it, we're finally looking at uh, you, uh, some positive news and I truly believe in manifestation. I truly believe in putting things out into the universe. I believe that that's how this all happened. <laughs> that's how the band all happened. I would lay in bed as an 11 year old girl and listen to my headphones and pretend that I was the singer of the band and what my stage moves would be. So I love putting it out in the universe and I'm going to continue doing that because I think just saying it, yes, there'll be a tour, there'll be a tour, there'll be a tour, means there'll be a tour. <laughs> so so um, we do have uh, dates being planned. So we're very, very excited about that. More info to come soon. I know a lot of bands are out there releasing dates and uh, ours will be coming out soon. Can't wait. So along that line, before we say goodbye, where can viewers, where can they go to find out about Butcher Babies and then what you guys have coming up? Where can they hear Last Dance if they well, want to follow Apple along? Music, um, Apple Music, Spotify, wherever you love to get your music. We are all over that. So play it as much as you possibly can. <laughs> Spread the word. Tell all your friends. Even the old YouTube, man. YouTube's yeah. still there. <laughs> <laughs> One of our favorite music videos we've ever done, Yorktown, came out uh, a couple months ago, and that video is out and so much fun. Um, ButcherBabies.com, you'll find all your Butcher Babies needs, uh, all platforms at Butcher Babies. Um, yeah, come join us on this crazy ride. Uh, we're just two best friends um, with a couple other best friends with us and, and uh, playing some music, so... And then I do want to touch on a couple more comments before I turn it back over to Chief. So JD Ann says she is watching from England in the UK. Uh, she said, smashed every time you were here and would love for you to come again. And Christopher Forbes says, been watching you two grow as artists from the beginning, from the electrical tape tops to now y'all are amazing and such awesome human beings. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Thank the, you, evolution of, the evolution of butcher baby <laughs> there was another i saw um michelle said i miss you guys and your music keeps me sober so congrats oh, to michelle, michelle on your sobriety got it. Yes. yes that's amazing so carla and heidi man you guys have some awesome personalities right so i mean i think i think our, our viewers are able to kind of get a sense of uh, of the type of people that you are and, and that probably is going to gravitate them to your music even more so uh, thank you so much for joining us today. 
uh, spending time with you means so much to our military members and families and veterans and everybody that's, uh, like you said, uh, you guys are thanking us. We want to thank you as well because you do take us from this place of wherever we have to be kind of to hone in on when we're, we're doing a mission. You guys give us uh, an outlet, right, uh, to, to, to get get our minds away from that. And also, like you said, you, you're, you're hitting on songs that kind of touch our emotions as humans and we all share those same emotions. So uh, thank you for what you do for, for, for everybody in the world. Uh, like I said, we, we thank you just as much you guys thank us. Thank you thank so you much. Guys. That means so much, it means so much to us. Absolutely. So we wish you and the band success and happiness throughout 2021. And uh, we, we're gonna, if you could hold on right after the live chat, I gotta get some information from you, but man, we just really appreciate your time. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks for awesome. being with us. And when you're in Dallas, let us know. We'll, we want to come talk to you in person live. Absolutely. Yes. For a, yes. Another yeah. another interview. We'd love, love to do that. So thanks for Absolutely. being with us. Yeah, thank <laughs> you. You got it. All right, Chin now, chat out. Chat out. <laughs>